You should never buy a stock that is doing one very simple thing that's easy to spot if you know what to look for. I'm gonna show you that. Plus I will do my analysis of the overall stock markets, the commodity markets, the currency markets. We will look at a day trade from this week's action and run a stock scores market scan in search of opportunity. So what is it that you should avoid if you are thinking about buying a stock? One of the most common mistakes for new traders or individual investors that uh, get caught up in the fear of missing out is that they find stocks that are making big gains. They get excited by it. They feel like if they don't act right away, they're missing out on the opportunity of a lifetime. And then they buy the stock at the very worst time. When stocks move in upward trends, there are two types of trends that we can think about. One is a linear trend, and I'll show you this on a chart in just a moment. And the other is a parabolic trend. It is those parabolic trends that must be avoided because they are driven by emotion, by irrational traders chasing the stock higher. And when stocks go parabolic in their trend, they typically pull back and often pull back very sharply. So you need to know what a parabolic trend is and then simply avoid buying when a stock is in a parabolic trend. Now it's challenging because the emotion of the market will be at its absolute highest at that point. You really will see that the stock can do no wrong. It's going up very quickly, very sharply, and it really arouses those emotions, those feelings of, that fear of missing out, but you really have to overcome those fears and trade with a rational mind. Let's take a look at what a parabolic trend looks like. So we always start our trend lines at the starting point of the trend, so the low point. And we just take that line and we draw it across the first low point that's higher. So this is our linear trend line. All right, now parabolic trends are a curve. So we have another linear trend line like this, but up here, this trend has gone from a straight line to a curve. That is the parabolic trend line, and that is what you want to avoid. Now, how do you know it's parabolic? Well, if you take your linear trend line and you measure the distance from where price is to where that linear trend line is, that is as that difference grows, the more and more parabolic the trend is. What you definitely do not want to do is be buying in this period here when the trend is going parabolic. Buying linear trend lines is okay, provided they're breaking, you know, you get a break from a good pattern. So for example, this stock had a nice low volatility pattern here. It started to come alive with abnormal volume there. Stock scores indicators were good. That was the good time. This is the bad time. Do not buy there. Let's look at one other example. So again, start your trend line at the low point. Bring it up until it cuts across the low, the first low. So that's your linear trend line. As the trend goes steeper and steeper and more and more parabolic, you do not want to be buying up here. That is danger. You can buy this break. You can buy this breakout perhaps. But buying when the trend is going parabolic, just way too risky. All right, well, let's now move on to the U.S. market analysis. Each week, I try to give you a sense of where the markets are headed short-term and long-term. For the long-term view, we look at the S&P 500. For the large-cap view, we look at the S&P 500. And then we have the tech market, which is uh, driven by the NASDAQ 100 index. And the small-cap retail trader market is driven by the IWM. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 first. This is the intraday chart. You can see it's been pretty quiet through uh, the last few weeks here. We did manage to break to new highs there, not with a lot of enthusiasm. You can see summer volume very low, but the buyers are still in control. The long-term chart really shows that the buyers are in control. We're in a good linear upward trend. And so even though the market's been going up for, well, since the COVID crash back in here, um, it actually doesn't look that terrible because it is a linear trend and until we break the trend line, I just wouldn't get too worried about it. I know it's hard to 
sort of be a buyer of stocks. I think it's more a market where you want to be a holder of stocks that you're already in, but not uh, initiate a lot of new positions, but still no reason to panic on the, on the buy side yet. On the NASDAQ 100, also in the control of the buyers, we have an upward trend line. The uh, intensity of the upward trend is slowing a little bit. That's called a rising wedge, where the bottoms are rising faster than the tops. That could lead to a break of the upward trend line, so you want to watch for that. On the Russell 2000 short term, uh, we're really just been going sideways for the last uh, few weeks, but we are starting to build what's called an ascending triangle, which has compressing price volatility. And then if it can break out through resistance from that compressing price volatility, that can often lead to a nice leg up. So I would watch for that in the next week or two. Canadian markets, Toronto Stock Exchange, upward trend in the short term and in the long term also in an upward trend. So those markets are strong in the buyer control. The TSX Venture, which is those micro cap stocks in Canada, is in more of a downtrend. So it is somewhat negative on the TSX Venture stocks. Currencies, US dollar continues to work on the bottoming process. We had the downward trend line broken. We've made a double bottom. And now what we need to see is a breakout through that resistance level as a cue that the US dollar is going to move higher. Bitcoin has been in a little bit of recovery. It uh, broke that little downward trend line last week and then, or two weeks ago, and then this week, we're starting to see a little bit of follow through to the upside. I'm not too optimistic yet because we're still below that downward trend line. And so although Bitcoin is looking better, I don't think it's out of the woods yet. You can see the stock scores are starting to pick up. We've moved above 50 on the sentiment stock score. And Ethereum also moving up, looks better, still has an uphill battle as there's lots of resistance. Commodities, you can see gold broke down this week and looks more likely to go lower than higher. I would be cautious with gold stocks right now. Oil also looking a bit toppy, a little bit of a bad week there. The upward trend line perhaps being flirted with from a little falling top as we come into this zone of resistance from over here. And so I would be cautious with oil. It's not a major breakdown yet, but still deserving of some attention. And the fear chart is relatively low. So bullish long term on US and Canadian stocks. I'm also bullish short term on Canadian stocks, but only neutral short term on US stocks. Gold neutral long term bearish short term. And my long term rating is very close to being bearish as well on gold. Oil still bullish long term, but some caution is warranted. I've got a neutral rating short term. The summer stock market is relatively quiet, but every day there are a few hot stocks that can be traded. You just have to be focused and very selective with the stocks you trade. There's maybe five or 10 stocks a day that are, are hot trading abnormal volume. Those are the stocks to focus on. Gold is broken down in the short term and oil is looking a little toppy and fear is low. All right, let's get into the day trade of the week which is an example of a stock that we uh, were triggered on or identified with my action candle algorithm that runs on all US stocks through the day in my active live service. You can learn more about active live on stock scores. And let's take a look at a hot stock from Friday. This is KXIN. You can see from the chart trading very abnormal volume. That's the kind of stocks we want to trade right now. Started the day with an action candle at 934. You can see the spike of volume there. That led to the first leg of the run higher. We then had a nice pullback and there was a second opportunity to enter in here on the break of the pullback. We call that a pullback play. And then another pullback play entry if we draw a trend line across the tops and there, we had another pullback play entry there. See the little pink dot? That's one of our signals to look for. And so we had another run up higher into the close. So a few opportunities to do well with KXIN. Just looking at that initial entry for every $100 of risk, you would take 900 shares and 900 shares times the price of the stock at that time is $1,908 of capital. Uh, pretty hard to margin stocks under $3, so margin not available, but nonetheless, it closed the day at 9.2 times risk, which was a $920 gain for every $100 of risk. That's a 48% return on capital required on a one day hold. All right, let's get into the stock scores market scan. This is where we use the stock scores market scan tool to identify longer term trading opportunities. And we're going to run the abnormal breaks US scan. 
Uh, now you can take a preset scan like this for stock scores members and adjust the price ranges. So I could say I only want stocks under $20, for example, and maybe above a dollar. Uh, whatever you like to do, you can add in filters. We're going to run the market scan looking through all US stocks. It found 27 that meet those criteria. These are stocks that are making abnormal price gains with good volume. And then we want to take a look at the charts to see if they have predictive chart patterns. So this FTFT, for example, was a great day trader on Friday, one of those hot stocks. However, it has a lot of resistance to deal with. A lot of people own this stock at higher prices, so I would pass on that. KXIN was our day trade of the week. Also a very strong mover, but longer term, I don't really like it because there's lots of resistance that this stock is going to have to fight through. And that's often the theme right now is there are a lot of stocks that are moving up into downward trends. And that means they are going to find selling pressure. Here's another example, WPRT. Again, good day trader on Friday because of course with day trading, you're taking a much shorter term view. The stock moved nicely through the day. But for the longer term hold, you have all of these people that have bought the stock in the last almost year who are in at higher prices. If you bought the stock at $6 two months ago, your mindset is, if it gets back to $6, I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna get out of this dog. And that is what hinders stocks from moving higher when they have recent trading activity at higher prices. We call that opt or uh, pessimism. We call that resistance. And it's a real factor when you are inspecting charts. Now here's a stock, Gannett, that is breaking out to new highs. It has no resistance. It's a little bit volatile, which increases the chance that it will pull back. If we also take a look at the three-year weekly chart, you see a decent long-term turnaround pattern. Um, I would give this a six and a half out of 10. I think that this stock has a 65% chance of moving higher, pretty good. Keep on moving through the process. We are looking for the right patterns. Once you get good at this, you can go through 30 charts in two minutes or so. When you start out, it might take you 15 minutes. It's practice. If you want to learn how to do that, that's what the uh, training courses that we have at Stock Scores are all about. Teaching you what to look for, gives you access to this tool, and then you can uh, start to save time, focus on making money and not chasing after what people say, but rather what the market tells us through abnormal activity. Some of the key things to look for are what I teach in the investor course, for example, for the day trader, the active trader course. These are all things that give you access to my tools and services. And if you're interested in that, take a look at the trader training menu on stock scores and you can learn more. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Hope you're having a great summer. Markets uh, yeah, generating some ideas every day, but you gotta be picky. So keep that in mind going into next week. Hope you've enjoyed this. If so, subscribe, like the, like the video and see you next week. Bye for now. Trade well.